I want to talk about sound some more. I had kind of an interesting comment exchange on my last video where the commenter, and you hear this quite often in audio, the commenter said that the speakers he's using don't pressurize the room because they're open baffle. And the idea there is that you need a boxed speaker, you know, either a sealed or a ported, especially a ported one to pressurize a room. And I think this comes down to kind of a myth that's been circulating about how sound works in a room. The way that I think about sound, and I'm, I don't know if I said this before, but you have to look at the airspace that's in the room almost like a big block of jello. You know, as odd as that sounds. And under normal circumstances at room temperature, the jello is jiggling very slightly. It's always moving. That's the air molecules in the jello, you could say. There's move, but it's uniform pretty much. Unless it's hotter over there, they're moving a little bit more and colder over here. Say so you've got a draft from a window, they're moving slower. Okay, but that's the general movement of what's going on in the room. Now, in a room, at uh, whatever altitude you're at, you have air pressure, a certain amount of air pressure. And what air pressure is, is the weight of the atmosphere pushing down on the bottom of the air. It's very much like in the ocean, you'll get more pressure as you go deeper. That's the weight of the water pushing down. That's what creates the pressure. Same thing with the air. So here, there's a certain um, figure for air pressure where I am. Now in my basement, which is slightly lower, it's not gonna be hugely different. So this is air pressure. Now I think one of the th confusions happens is that people conflate air pressure with sound pressure, okay? Sound pressure is not air pressure. They're, they are not the same thing. When you create sound, take your, your speaker's cone, for example, look at what it does. It pushes out, that creates a pressure, like a high pressure in front of it, and then it goes back. That creates an equal amount of low pressure right behind it. That gives you your wave, okay? And the speed of sound being what it is, by the time the cone pushes out, the wave, you know, wherever it is in the room, like low frequency waves are very long. But as the cone moves out, the wave is propagating out into the room. So you've got a high pressure part. And then immediately as the cone starts moving back, you get a low pressure point as well. So what you have is you've got the jello jiggling radically or a lot right in this localized area at the peak of the wave and then at the trough of the wave you've got the the uh, jello jiggling less but overall they are equal in that they cancel out okay so you get the high pressure low pressure equal the air pressure does not change in other words the overall air pressure in the room doesn't change. When they say that a, a speaker can pressurize a room, what they mean is they, they are talking about the general excitation of the air molecules in the room. It's gonna pump a lot of energy into the room. And it doesn't matter where that energy is coming from. At the lower frequencies, it's gonna be more of a problem. At the higher frequencies, um, there's something called the Schroeder frequency. And that's the dividing line between where sound acts like rays in a room. That's usually mids and high frequencies. They, they act like light rays. You know, you always have a light ray that bounces off a window or, or a mirror or something like that. And then below that, it's said to be all pressure, okay? Where the sound acts as pressure. And that has to do with the size of the waves. Right? In the standard average room, 
not like almost none of the uh, waves that are produced in the base region actually fit in the room. So they can't fully form that, that, that full wave. Okay, that single sine wave full wave. So what you have is you have waves that are bouncing back and forth. They start here, they go to the end of the room, they continue around, but in, in everything you still have that high pressure excitation and that low pressure de-excitation. If you look at a drop of water hitting or, you know, drop of rock or stone in, the, in a puddle of water, you'll see this happening, except for sound is a 3D thing, okay? So when you drop the pebble in the water, you see in 2D that the waves start to ripple out. But what you see in particular is you see that the peak of the wave is above the surface of the water, and then the trough of the wave is actually below the surface of the water. So there's no net change in the pressure of the water when, or there, if, it, if there is, there's very tiny amount, okay? It's most, most of what's going on is very localized as it radiates out. So that's the difference between, you know, air pressure and sound pressure. It's better to say sound amplitude actually. It's the amount of, of energy that's going into the medium, no matter what it is, like from peak to trough. And peak being positive pressure, trough being negative pressure. So to sum up, when they say pressurize the room, what they mean is that the room is being energized. That big block of jello is going from relatively still, you know, jittering a little bit to jittering rapidly. Okay. So it's really moving around, but the size of the jello hasn't increased. The pressure of the jello hasn't increased. The room hasn't gotten bigger. You're not blowing up a balloon or anything like that. You're just dumping energy into the room. And it really doesn't matter where the energy is coming from. If the energy is being produced is going into the medium, which is the air and it is moving throughout the room. So whether your base frequencies are being produced by a vented sub or a ported sub or an infinite baffle sub, like I've got in my uh, room downstairs or an open baffle sub, which I experimented with, you're still gonna have that same amount of energy in the room if the speaker is producing the same amount of energy. The problem is that a lot of people see, don't see the differences between these things. An open baffle speaker is not going to produce very much low bass, whereas a, a ported, a vented speaker can really dig down deep and put out a lot more down low. It all depends upon the design. I'm not saying you can't get real deep frequencies from an open baffle, it's certainly possible, but in general, you take the same size speaker, put it in an vented box, you're going to get a lot more low bass than you ever will from an open baffle or a sealed speaker. And that energy goes out in the room.